told me WMO plugin is basically in its final shape. He is just adding some uh, features he wants to finish before release. Uh, but what is already here should stay the same way and shouldn't really change. So if you are watching this video after a release was made, it's okay. If a release it wasn't made yet, uh, when you are watching this video, just download the newest version of WMO plugin from a repository and we can start using it at least for test uh, purposes. Uh, so for me, it's now time to finally start making tutorials about WMO plugin. So assuming that you've got already WMO plugin, if you don't know how to get the newest version, I have covered it up in previous videos. And uh, we will set some things up, speak, uh, make some sort of introduction, and we will convert uh, to simple models. Uh, so let's start with getting um, um, our model. Uh, just to make this very easy, uh, for start, I am using just one model, it, is, it has just one part, and it is exterior only. So this is basically the most simple type of WMO, you can have just one WMO group, just one model, just exterior. Uh, but WMO plugin is really great, especially for these kind of objects, because they are ex extremely fast uh, to convert. Uh, like I said in previous videos, I'm using Maya for modeling and UV mapping because I just like Maya in those regards more than Blender. Uh, just to speak about my structure here, I've got the art work path and in this path I've got the same structure which uh, will be in my MPQ. So I've got work, custom, textures, buildings. Uh, and this is quite important because when you do something like this, it will make your life way easier. You will see why a little bit later. So this is the first part of my path, which is just my some sort of work uh, space. And uh, this is path which will be lead to my textures in MPQ. This, uh, like I said, make my life way easier. So let's give it some descriptive name. It is version yeah. It is version 1. And let's open object in Blender. Obviously, if you are using Blender for modeling, you don't have to do this step. So I've got my object here. Okay, what do you do with it? Uh, first, I should probably make a small walkthrough through our new panels. So when you've got your WMO plugin running, here is this uh, the work F tab. And here are some buttons which are very useful and we will get to them in this and in following videos. Uh, but uh, this plugin also adds something to these panels here. So let's go through it. In scene, I think that there is nothing here. Okay. But in but here in this part of scene, we've got something what the worker route. Uh, if you don't have it up here like this, you can just move it. You can move these panels, so uh, you can organize it in some way to have this up here, so you can have it uh, easily accessible. It can be very useful. And as you can see, I've got these settings, ambient color of white, ambient intensity 1, 2, 7. This setting just works very fine for me. And you, I've got a use texture relative path checked here. And as you can see, I've got this D artwork here. That's the first part of path to my textures. If you remember it, it's the artwork. That's my workspace, the artwork. And now uh, this is path to my textures, which will be used in MPQ. So make my life way easier. So you don't have to do this to use this feature, but it will uh, help you with filling texture path quicker. Word, there is, I think, nothing here. In object properties, we've got actually two things for two plane and WMO group. It will probably be somewhere down here, so move it up uh, if if you want to have it easily accessible, like I do. Uh, constraints, nothing. Modifiers, nothing. Uh, vertex groups. Uh, I think that there should be some things bound to 
uh, collisions, but that's done by this button, so you don't have to worry about it too much now. In this version, materials in materials, we've got this uh, World of Warcraft material part, this uh, this panel here, which is very useful. You will need it very often, so I already recommend you to move this up here and keep it open like this. And that's pretty much it, I think. There shouldn't be anything more here. So these are our panels. So this was just a small walkthrough where you've got some things which are bound to WMOs. And uh, I know that it maybe looks a little bit intimidating now, um, but because that's a lot of stuff to worry about. But uh, plugin will actually do nearly all work for you by itself if you set it properly. And you don't really have to set it uh, set too much things up. So use this, and that's pretty much it. What you need for most of models. Uh, so when I've got this model, which has already UV maps, it has materials, it has, it has textures. It is just finished object, and I just want to uh, turn it into WMO. Well, uh, in this case, click on to WMO group. So this is now WMO group, and uh, as you can see, this is checked now, and uh, all of those settings you can just leave as they are in default. You can assign some name and description. Uh, in our case, this is outdoor. Uh, if this was interior part of WMO, we would need to use, use indoor, but this is outdoor, so this is exterior, it's okay. Uh, DBC group ID, and this is for WMO area IDs. Yet again, think we don't have to worry about in this case. No liquids, uh, no vertex color, and so on. Just all turned off, just all in default. This is just fine. Uh, so this is now WMO group, which will be part of WMO. Uh, what next? Well, texture to material and to WMO material. These two buttons. And this has now set our materials uh, so they will be used by WMO. Uh, just one thing I will change here is this to stone. So these are stones. So all materials are now set as stone. And now I will describe what is here. So when you get to material settings, there are some quite uh, neat features here. Shader, uh, you most of times you will just use diffuse, but you can uh, try others out. Uh, terrain type, this is a kind of uh, kind of sound which is produced by that material when player walks over it. Uh, so my whole model is just stone, everything is stone, so I want all my materials to have stone terrain type. But you may want to use another ones. Dirt is default, by the way. Blending modes, uh, there are three which are used most commonly, I would say, alpha, alpha key and opaque. Uh, opaque means that uh, you can never see through it. So even when you have a completely, uh, completely blank or, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, blank bas basically texture, uh, it will be white and you will never be able to see through that geometry. When you've got alpha key, it means that every single part of the geometry will be either uh, opaque or you will be able to see just straight through it. There will be just a hole basically. So whenever you've got some sort of lowered opacity on texture, there will be just a hole on that object and you will be able to see through it. It isn't really very useful blending mode, but it can be sometimes used. Uh, alpha, that's something totally different. So this means that when texture is opaque, you can just, you, you can't see through. It is just opaque, okay, it just works fine, but when you've got a lowered opacity there, you can partially see through it. Uh, that's a very useful blending mode, for example, for windows. But in my case, all my textures are supposed to be completely opaque. I don't want to be able to see through any part of this model, so opaque blending mode is just fine for me. The only exception is uh, that collision. I will reuse this to fix this. So this is collision here and my collision isn't actually supposed to be a WMO material. 
uh, I don't want this to be a material. I don't want this to be a texture. Uh, why? Because it isn't supposed to be visible in game. So this collision plane I've got here, I want to set it as invisible. How to do this? Just uncheck this WMO material. That's all. So now this plane won't be visible in game at all. So everything what has this material will be invisible in game. That's what I wanted. And the rest has WMO, uh, the uh, water worker material set. What is here? Two sided rendering. Uh, this means that those faces will be visible from both directions. Uh, you use this only when you've got any sort of plane on your model which is just flat completely and you are supposed to be able to see it from both directions. For example, window. If you've got window made just out of one plane, you will want to use uh, this two-sided rendering. Uh, this is what two-sided rendering basically looks like. Even when you are looking from the inside of model, you can see uh, its faces. On the other hand, what World of Warcraft does is that uh, by default, it doesn't show, like here, uh, back, uh, back parts of faces, which means that it saves performance a lot. So two-sided rendering, if you don't need it, don't use it. Use it only on materials which really need two-sided rendering. Darkened, I am not completely sure what it does now. It says darkened, so it's probably darkened, okay. And shaded, uh, well, enabled night glow is way more descriptive name because it already is night glow. Uh, when you've got material with uh, unshaded property, it will glow uh, during night, but it won't glow during day. Uh, if you wonder what it looks like, take a look at, for example, bottom buildings. At night, their windows glow. Uh, during day, their windows don't glow. That's what this does. And what is here? Uh, those are uh, texture paths. Uh, I'm just using default settings here, and the only thing you need are texture paths. Now, you would normally have to enter them by hand here, uh, but what you can do, or what I can do in my case, is just use this fill textures button. And what this has done for me is that I've got now my paths to textures. Well, how did it, uh, how have I managed to do so? Well, if you remember, my paths to textures are this. The artwork, world, custom, textures, buildings. And here I've got my textures, which my model is using, or my models are using in general, my buildings. And uh, I've got the artwork as a relative path. So it has removed this part, uh, this part from path. And it has taken this part, so world, custom, textures, building, what is remaining here. It has inserted it here. And then it has added name of texture, name of my file, and it has added BLB extension, which means that my paths to textures are now complete. I got all my textures in one path, and that's what I already wanted. If you want to use textures from different paths and so on, you may need to either correct those paths here, or you may need to just enter them by hand or copy them there. So basically, in any possible way, just enter texture paths here to every single material. But if you've got all textures in one directory and if you set everything up like I did, uh, you can just uh, let button handle it for you. So that's it. My collision is invisible. Uh, all my materials have everything set up. And the last thing I will need to do is just quick collision. I got my model selected, so I will, so by clicking to quick on quick collision, all my model has now collision, and that's all I ever wanted. If you want to have collision just on some parts of model, for example, you would need to select those parts and assign collision only to those parts. But I want to have collision on all my model. Now let's just go to file, uh, export. Export WMO. I will export it. For example, here it doesn't really matter. It is a stairs version one. And now, really, that's done. So just to show you what it looks like and that it works.
to prove to you that it works. I think I have it already here, doesn't matter anyway. Okay, so just to make sure that everything worked out. World custom WMO city walls and I got my stars here. So it works. Uh, I could just test it in game as well to make sure that collisions work, but uh, trust me, they work. <laughs> it's okay. So that's it. Uh, this may have looked a little bit tedious, maybe, uh, but it's actually very fast. So uh, just take a look at timestamp of video and uh, check this out, uh, how quick it can be. So I've got my model and let's start. Export selection, it's version 2 in this case, delete old one, import new one, QWMO group, text based material, this, 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 this isn't material, I've got stone everywhere, it's fine, so it's time to export it, and guys, it's done. That was export process. So if you've got everything set up in the same way, you've got this scene setting here and so on, and you've got just the WMOs which have only exterior parts, either one or multiple exterior parts, but only exteriors, this is how quick it is to export WMO from any sort of 3D object right now. This is just great. And I would really like to thank Skarn for great work because this tool is working, it is nearly finished, it is accessible, and most of all, it is convenient and fast and easy to use. We need more such tools, and I think that we all should uh, give uh, credit to Skarn for making this possible for us. So thanks, Skarn, and guys, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful for you, and as always, happy morning.